The life, death, life, nature causes fate, relationship, love, creativity, and all else to move in large and wild patterns, one following the other in this order. Creation, increase, power, dissolution, death, incubation, creation, and so on. Theft or absence of ideas, thoughts, feelings is the outcome of a disturbed flow. Here is how to take back the river. Receive nurturance to begin the cleanup of the river. Troublesome contaminants in the river are obvious when a woman turns away sincere compliments about her creative life. There may be only a little pollution, as in the offhanded, Oh, how nice you are to give such a compliment. Or they may be massive trouble on the river. Oh, this old thing? Or you must be out of your mind. And also the defense of, of course I'm wonderful. How could you fail to notice? These are all signs of injured animus. Good things flow into the woman but are immediately poisoned. To reverse the phenomenon, a woman practices taking in the compliment. Even if initially it looks as though she is lunging at the compliment in order to keep it for herself this time. Savors it, fights off the malignant animus that wants to tell the giver of the compliment, that's what you think, you don't really know all the mistakes she's made, you don't really see what a drip she is, etc, etc. Negative complexes are particularly attracted to the juiciest ideas, the most revolutionary and wonderful ideas, and the most rampant forms of creativity. There are no two ways about it. We must summon up a clearer acting animus, and the older one must be laid to rest, that is, sent down to the archival layer of the psyche, where we file away deflated and folded impulses and catalysts. There they become artifacts rather than actors or affects. Respond. That is how to clear the river. Wolves lead immensely creative lives. They make dozens of choices every day, decide this way or that, estimate how far, concentrate on their prey, calculate the chances, seize opportunity, react powerfully to accomplish their goals. Their abilities to find the hidden, to coalesce intention, to focus on the desired outcome, and to act in their own behalf to gain it are the exact characteristics required for creative follow-through in humans. To create, one must be able to respond. Creativity is the ability to respond to all that goes on around us, to choose from the hundreds of possibilities of thought, feeling, action, and reaction that arise within us, and to put these together in a unique response, expression, or message that carries moment, passion, and meaning. In this sense, loss of our creative milieu means finding ourselves limited to only one choice, divested of suppressing or censoring feelings and thoughts not acting not saying doing or being be wild that is how to clear the river in its original form the river does not flow in polluted we manage that the river does not dry up we block it if we want to allow its freedom we have to allow our ideational lives to be let loose to stream letting anything come initially censoring nothing that is creative life. It is made up of divine paradox. It is an entirely interior process. To create, one must be willing to be stone stupid, to sit upon a throne on top of a jackass and spill rubies from one's mouth. Then the river will flow. Then we can stand in the stream of it raining down. We can put out our skirts and shirts to catch as much as we can carry. Begin. This is how to clear the polluted river. If you're scared, scared to fail, I say begin already. Fail if you must, pick yourself up, start again. If you fail again, you fail. So what? Begin again. It is not the failure that holds us back, but the reluctance to begin over again that causes us to stagnate. If you're scared, so what? If you're afraid something's going to leap out and bite you, then for heaven's sakes, get it over with already. Let your fear leap out and bite you so that you can get it over with and go on. You will get over it. The fear will pass. In this case, it is better you meet it head on. Feel it and get it over with than to keep using it to avoid cleaning up the river. Protect your time. This is how to banish pollutants. 
I know a fierce painter here in the Rockies who hangs a sign on the chain that closes off the road to her house when she is in a painting or thinking mode. I am working today and am not receiving visitors. I know you think this doesn't mean you because you are my banker, agent, or best friend, but it does. Another sculptor I know hangs this sign on her gate. Do not disturb unless I've won the lottery or Jesus has been sighted on the old Tao Highway. As you can see, the well-developed animus has excellent boundaries. Stay with it. How to further banish this pollution? By insisting nothing will stop us from exercising the well-integrated animus. By continuing our soul spinning, our wing-making ventures, our art, our psychic mending and sewing. Whether we feel strong or not, whether we feel ready or not. If necessary, by tying ourselves to the mast, the chair, the desk, the tree, the cactus, wherever we create. It is essential, even though often painful, to put in the necessary time. Do not skirt the difficult tasks inherent in striving for mastery. A true creative life burns in more ways than one. Negative complexes that arise along the way are banished or transformed. Your dreams will guide you the last part of the way. By putting your foot down once and for all and by saying, I love my creative life more than I love cooperating with my own oppression. If we were to abuse our children, social services would show up at our doors. If we were to abuse our pets, the Humane Society would come to take us away. But there is no creativity patrol or soul police to intervene if we insist on starving our own souls. There is just us. We are the only ones to watch over the soul self and the heroic animus. It is bitterly harsh to water them once a week or once a month or even once a year. They each have their circadian rhythms. They need us and need the water of our craft every day. Protect your creative life. If you would avoid Ombra de la Alma, the starved soul, name the problem for what it is and fix it. Practice your work every day. Then let no thought, no man, no woman, no mate, no friend, no religion, no job, and no crabbed voice force you into a famine. If necessary, show your incisors. Craft your real work. Build that hut of warmth and knowing. Pull your energy from over there to over here. Insist on a balance between pedestrian responsibility and personal rapture. Protect the soul. Insist on quality, creative life. Let neither your own complexes, your culture, intellectual detritus, nor any high-sounding aristocratic, pedagogical, or political lala steal it away from you. Lay out nourishment for the creative life. Although many things are good and nutritious for the soul, most fall into wild woman's four basic food groups. Time, belonging, passion, and sovereignty. Stock up. These keep the river clean. When the river is cleansed again, it is free to flow. A woman's creative output increases and therefore continues in natural cycles of increase and decrease and increase again. Nothing will be carried off or fouled for long. Whatever contaminants occur naturally are neutralized efficiently. The river returns as our system of nourishment, one we can enter without fear, one we can drink from without worry, one beside which we can calm the tormented soul of La Llorona, healing her children and restoring them to her. We can dismantle the polluting process of the factory, seat a new animus. We can live our lives as we wish and as we see fit, there beside the river, holding our many babies in our arms, showing them their reflections in the clear, clear water.